Okay, this is the first part of chapter 20, so part A, about blood vessels. All right, so different kinds of blood vessels. And you have a couple of pictures here. One is similar to the one that we've looked at for lab. Uh, down here at the bottom, the tissue slide. The, uh, showing the difference between an artery, which we see here, and a vein, which we see here. Now, this other picture up here. This is a coronary artery that's blocked. The only place that blood is passing is in this small tiny space. So again, you have an inverse relationship between volume. So here, the volume is going to be low. But that means that the pressure is going to be high. And so all of this oops, is plaque, cholesterol plaque, buildup, blocking blood flow. And so that artery would need to be cleaned out or a bypass put in place. So if you have a tube and there's a blockage here, they can go in before and after and put in another tube to do the bypass. A stent would go in and they'd have to suck that out and put in a straight piece. It would be a tube and it would sit there, it would be stuck there to keep it from collapsing. And that's where stents have helped. They used to go in and do what they call a balloon where the, they would insert a catheter in and then expand the balloon in that space to break up all that black. But then the blood vessel would collapse. And so the stent keeps it from collapsing. All right, so arteries, capillaries, veins, and then blood flow. Blood vessels are tubes that transport blood throughout the body. There are three types, arteries, veins, and capillaries. Arteries and veins are organs because they have three layers of tissue, which is what we see, oops here, surrounding a lumen, which is where the blood is, or would be if it hadn't been drained in this picture. Now, remember from the lymphatic chapter, arteries and veins share traits with the lymphatic vessels, lymphatic trunks, lymphatic, uh, the collecting ducts, um, and the cisterna chile. So you have similar features here and there. And so that's why they're still pertinent towards each other. Okay. The three layers, the internal layer is called the tunica interna. It's a layer of endothelium and areolar tissue. Again, endothelium is a short version of writing out simple squamous epithelium. And this is the only layer that's continuous throughout all of the blood vessels. Remember that it's also continuous with the endocardium in the heart. So there's no seam between one vessel and the next. There's no seam 
between the collecting ducts and the subclavian veins. Okay. Superficial to that is the tunica media. The tunica media, oops, down here is this clear pale layer and this dark layer. It's the middle layer. You have smooth muscle tissue and you have elastic tissues. This is the layer that's subject to the autonomic nervous system actions of vasoconstriction, vasodilation. With vasoconstriction, oops, vasoconstriction, it's going to decrease the volume of blood or the size of the lumen, and it's going to increase the pressure. So the blood vessel can constrict, the blood vessel, the smooth muscle tissue can contract and make the lumen smaller. It doesn't change the outside diameter, it changes the internal diameter. Vasodilation is gonna do the opposite. It's going to increase the volume and decrease the pressure. Okay, high volume, low pressure. Again, I've said that before. There's an inverse relationship between volume and pressure. The tunica uh, media is going to be uh, attached to blood vessels. So that's the autonomic nervous system. The outer layer is the tunica externa. Tunica externa. Mostly areolar tissue for anchoring the blood vessel within other organs. Now, tunica externa, also used to be called tunica adventitia, tunica interna, also used to be called tunica intima. But for what I'm, yeah, I think that they did a better job switching to something more pertinent. So this is what we find in arteries and veins. Just the, two, the endothelium is what we find in capillaries. All right, so arteries, they come in various sizes. Largest are the aorta. Large arteries are referred to as trunks. Artery is the medium size and arterioles are the smallest. So traits of arterioles, they carry blood away from the heart. So you put the A in artery, with the A in arterial, or the A, A in away. Away, arteries go away. They have the thicker walls and smaller lumens. So they have more smooth muscle tissue and more elastic tissue. So more distinct layering of tissues. They carry the blood under the highest blood pressure. And that's going to go back to this smaller lumen, smaller volume, bigger pressure. You have more traits on the next slide. So I don't think you're done with that one. Arterioles end with precapillary sphincters. 
precapillary sphincters are a single ring of smooth muscle tissue, single, single smooth muscle tissue fiber that wraps around the entrance to a capillary. When they're relaxed, the capillaries are open and the blood perfuses through the capillary bed. Keep in mind that three fourths of the capillaries in the body are shut down. It just depends on where. When the sphincters are closed, it's going to reduce blood flow. So it doesn't mean these are empty. It just means they're not getting any new blood. So arteries go away. High pressure, smaller lumen, bigger, thicker walls. Okay, you have a table to compare sympathetic effects and parasympathetic effects. In the first box, first row, you're going to put vasodilation and vasoconstriction across from skeletal muscle arteries. It's the number of impulses. If you go back to the nervous system chapter, there is a illustration of this. So it's the number of impulses that are sent that's gonna change the diameter of the skeletal muscle arteries. For both the arteries of the skin and viscera, you're gonna see vasoconstriction. So during times of stress, we reduce blood flow to the skin and viscera and increase it to the skeletal muscles. When the stress is gone, we're going to vasodilate or vasoconstrict the skeletal muscles. And that goes back to that pie chart that we saw in the chapter 19 material. Parasympathetic effects, nothing goes in the first box across from skeletal muscles because the parasympathetic does vision does not affect the skeletal muscle arteries. Vasodilation is what happens to both the arteries in the skin and the viscera. So during times of non-stress, we're gonna increase blood flow to the skin and we're gonna increase blood flow to the viscera. So we're gonna increase things like digestion, digestive activities. We're gonna increase things like urine formation and uh, filtration through the liver. Blushing is a parasympathetic response. Most people associate it with being embarrassed and they think that that is a stress response, but it's not. So again, it's the tunica media that's gonna be affected by both of these divisions of the autonomic nervous system. Capillaries are microscopic tubes of endothelium. There's only one kind of tissue, so they're not an organ. Yes, they're a blood vessel, but no, they're not an organ. Different categories of capillaries. You have continuous capillaries, which is what we see oops, back here. All of these have branches. And so those are what we call continuous capillaries. They branch off from each other. Fenestrated, which is what we see here. And sinusoids. So fenestrated means that the 
capillaries have fenestrations, which are pores or openings in the wall of the capillaries. This increases the volume of materials that is exchanged, both going out and coming in. So material can go in in larger volumes and material can come out in larger volumes. So some places where this would be found, these kinds of capillaries would be found, would be like the liver, the spleen, uh, the digestive tract, where you have to have large volumes of materials moving. Sinusoids, on the other hand, rather than being round, are going to be oval or flattened. We see these in the liver, they're called hepatic sinusoids. And they're kind of like a trough and they lead to, um, there's a bunch of them that converge into a bigger vessel. But rather than being round, they're flattened troughs. Okay, so function of the capillaries is to exchange materials between the cells of the body and the blood. Transporting blood from arterial to venule, which are the smallest veins. This happens without needing energy. When blood comes in from an arterial, the filtration pressure pushes materials out of the blood vessels. Osmosis is going to push most of the water and pull some of the solutes with it. So two different kinds of passive transport, moving blood materials into and out of the blood. Keep in mind that osmosis is also what's going to move some of that fluid into the lymphatic system. So capillary exchange is another video that you need to watch. Veins. Veins go from small to larger. Venules are the smallest. Veins and then the vena cavae are the biggest. The traits of veins. Veins carry blood toward the heart. Veins come to a point, a V comes to a point. They have thinner walls. They have less smooth muscle tissue and less elastic tissues. So they have a larger lumen. They carry blood under the least pressure. So low pressure because of a higher Volume. Also, so not just finished yet, more traits. They have semilinear valves, similar to what's in the heart. So when the pressure is high, it opens up the valve. When the pressure drops, the valve closes to reduce the backflow of blood, just like the valves in the heart. 
placed between skeletal muscles. When the skeletal muscles are relaxed, they squish the vein, pushing the blood. When they contract, they allow the veins to fill up. So they act as a pump. Contracting and relaxing moves the blood flow within the veins because they have less smooth muscle tissue and less elastic tissue, they don't get assistance in moving the blood. And so with the artery walls, it pushes the blood. So it's not just the heart that pushes blood, it's also the walls of the arteries. The veins need some help. Now, in addition to having less smooth muscle tissue and uh, less elastic tissue, this is also going to allow the veins to be less resilient. That means that they can get stretched out. And that's where varicose veins come in. And yes, hemorrhoids are varicose veins in your anal canal. So, varicose veins are because of stretching, uh, pooling of blood. Okay, so arteries away from the heart, veins towards the heart. Capillaries connect the two, allow gas exchanges. Blood vessels. All right, so. Blood reservoirs are additional spaces built into our circulating pathway. We hold more blood than we absolutely have to have so that we can withstand a small loss. Structures, we've already mentioned this as a function of the spleen. In addition to the spleen, you have the liver, the kidneys, vessels, blood vessels in the skin, and blood vessels in the abdomen. So extra space in our circulating pathways. And that's why you can donate a pint of blood and it's not going to be life-threatening unless you're under a certain uh, body mass. But this is why we can donate a, a pint um, as long as we drink water and eat afterwards. Um, we can rebuild that within a certain amount of time. So blood reservoirs. So that's why if someone has their spleen taken out, the liver and the kidneys are gonna make up for that loss. Um, something else about the blood vessels, genetically, arteries are more um, rigid in their production and their placement. Um, and that's where some people can be born with a tendency or the traits to have an aneurysm. An aneurysm is a ballooning that can occur in a weak wall. So it's like a bulge. If you ever smacked your tires and then released it, uh, looked at the tire and there was a big bubble sticking out, that would be like an aneurysm. And so some people are genetically predisposed 
to have aneurysms because the genetic traits dictate where and how thick the arteries are. Capillaries and veins, on the other hand, develop where they need to. So as we need to get blood back towards the heart, you can develop new capillaries and you can develop new veins. And that's why you can have bypass surgery where they remove most of the femoral vein and have it inserted, used it as a way to make um, bypasses in the coronary arteries. All right, so that is the end of part A.